Okay. One first thing I want to do is go over a little of what we looked at last time, because when I re went back and watched the videos online on YouTube, I decided that I re we really hadn't treated it well enough. Um, particularly articles uh, 15, 17, and 15 and 19. Article 15 is coin the rights of the accused. And if you compare it to what you have in the federal constitution, it is far more extensive. And that's why I wanted to treat it a little more fully. Um, because and the problem is, is, with the advent of the Constitution for the United States, everybody when they're in some sort of a, an altercation with law enforcement or the government in general, they talk about their Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights. And really, when you're talking about relative to the state government, it's not your Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights that you're concerned about. It's your Article 15 and Article 19 rights. Because they are what actually constrain the state government. Now, if we look at the Fourth and Fifth Amendments, um, and realize that a uh, number of the states have uh, articles that correlate well to our uh, 15th and 19th articles. And these all came before the, that for the United States. So the articles, the amendments to the federal constitution that we so often vaunt are actually mimicking what already existed at the states. In most states. In most states. Not all states had bills of rights. Georgia doesn't have a bill of rights, or didn't have a bill of rights at the time. If we look at Articles Four, we'll look at Article Four first. The right of the, of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. No warrant shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. If you go to our Article Fifteen, I'm sorry, Article Nineteen which is our issue of searches and seizures. Every subject has the right to be secure from all unreasonable searches and seizures of his person, his house, his papers, and all his possessions. Therefore, all Are you warrants, reading from 19? I'm reading part one, article 19. Part one, not two. It comes before part two. Huh? It comes before part two. We don't have the parts yet. Page 55. <laughs> You were, I don't know what you were looking at, but. We were back here in the front of it that gives Article 19. 19. It didn't have anything like what you were saying. Uh, I, okay, anyway. Article 19 talks about you can't be denied because of sex. No. That's oh, you're thinking of the 19th Amendment. Right. Uh, you're, uh, you're looking at the federal constitution, not the state okay, constitution. Okay, okay. okay. Oh. This booklet is a wealth of information. Every subject has a right to be secure from all unreasonable searches and seizures of his person, house, his house, his papers, and all his possessions. Therefore, all warrants to search suspected places or arrest a person for examination or trial and prosecutions for criminal matters are contrary to this right if the cause or foundation of them be not previously supported by oath or affirmation, and if the order in a warrant to civil officer to make search in suspected places or to arrest one or more suspected persons to seize their property be not accompanied with a special designation of the persons or the objects of search, arrest or seizure, and no warrant shall be issued but in cases and with all formalities prescribed by law. Who can tell me what's missing? What, what, don't, what, what phrase don't you hear in our state constitution? And I just caught this relative to the federal one that we, everybody rests their their safety upon, their privacy upon. That's, not in, that's in here or not in here? It, it is in the federal constitution, but it's not in the state constitution. Well, here is the Two words. I'm talking about warrants. No, both require warrants. Article 4, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall be not be violated, and no warrant shall be issued but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, 
There is no loophole of probable cause in our state constitution. You have to have an oath, a warrant on, with oath or affirmation. What does that mean, oath with oath? Um, it means oath that probable cause is a squishy thing that's used for on-site seizures or on-site searches. They can go into your car because they have probable cause. But that's a federal term, that's not a state term. Does so that mean in a state you don't have to have probable cause? No, it means that you have to have a warrant. So here's my question. Then why it could we use the state constitution when, when um, people are trying to arrest you in the state? That, well, that's what you should be. That that is the con, that is the document by which state authorities, be they state or local, are bound. Okay, but not federal. Even not federal. A, even though they're in our state. Oh no 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 no! A federal authority in our state is bound by the federal constitution. A state authority in our state is bound by the state constitution. Okay. Dan, can I interrupt? Sure. I'd be happy to buy you a chicken finger so that you can nail no, it. No, it's, it's on the way. Oh, I'm going to put it on my tab. Well, I, 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 if you, I will be honored. I will ask them to put it on my tab. Okay. To thank you. I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, so that, that, just realize that our state constitution is far more protective of our rights than the federal constitution. One of the things that I've often contemplated is at the time of the, the federal constitution, there were people like Patrick Henry who were adamantly opposed. And one of the compromises was that states didn't want to see the federal constitution unless there was a bill of rights. And so that was amended in after the fact. But what we've lost with the federal constitution, everybody, even at the state level, looks to the federal constitution for the protection of their rights and not to their state constitution, which is what's actually active within their state. Well, if, someone, if a state trooper, for example, arrests you, which one? The state constitution. Well, that's what Ann was asking, right? Mm -mm. No, no, not exactly. She was asking about a federal authority acting inside of New Hampshire. Right, exactly what happens in that case. Then they're bound by the federal constitution. Okay. And so why is that? Be they're not covered by the state they're in at the time? I would think they no, they're not sworn. They're not sworn to the state They're not sworn to the state. They don't take, take an oath to the state constitution. They That's take an true. oath to the federal constitution. We take an oath to both, and the more restrictive of the two is the state. You mean the state, you have the state troopers take an oath to both? Yes. And whichever is the most restrictive? Is the one that would apply. Most restrictive on, on them. Oh, both, make it most difficult on them. Yes. Government is supposed to be difficult. <laughs> that, that's, the whole, that's the whole purpose of a constitution, is to make the job of governing difficult. Nobody knows what that the constitution is, so that's a problem. And that, and that is a true problem. That's why we're here. Well, well and one of... It's not being If the constitution is not being followed. That's true. <laughs> In any place. Yes. Yes. So how how do you get it get it to be followed? Nullification or succession well, if that doesn't work. It depend it it depends it depends on what you're talking about. If you're talking about an issue of state constitution relative to a state official, then you get individuals elected to office who will hold those state officials accountable. Well, that's what we try. Right. I mean, that ultimately, that's the job. That is the job of the people. Remember the voter's guide, Article 38. And the people ought to have a particular regard to those principles in the formation, in the selection of their officers and representatives. So when Ruth becomes a senator, a state senator, it's her job. Yes. She takes an oath of office. And it's, and it's our job. See what you're wearing to. She, she's unable to answer at the moment. <laughs> Which is just as well. Safer for you, anyway. 
<laughs> oh, you're on her side. Is everybody's on her side. That, that, that's, that's what you call collegiality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now, the other one we have is uh, rights of the accused, which in the federal constitution is Article 5. Oh, wait a minute. The no, federal's in front, right? Yeah. Okay. No person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime unless upon previous presentment or indictment of, of a grand jury, except in cases arising in the land or naval forces or the, in the militia, when in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject to the same offense to be put twice in jeopardy of life or limb. We have that in a separate article. Now, when the feds came into New Hampshire to arrest our citizens, did they, was there a grand jury? I have no idea. The grand jury could have been held wherever. Oh, okay. It didn't have to be held in New Hampshire. It should have happened. It's a, it's a federal grand jury. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, there's nothing in the Constitution that says where that grand jury must be held. There's a mistake in the Constitution. It should be the state in which the... Uh, That's where the trial must be held, in which the offense occurred. No, the offense occurred, but not where the person's from. So that the state, so that uh, it's where the offense. Say, say that one again so I can catch it. She's referring to Jerry DeLamus. What? Jerry DeLamus, who was nabbed last spring, spring March, um, uh, by federal agents for having participated in the events in the Oregon. The no, well, Oregon. No, he did not participate. Okay. Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. Well, he he went out there. I mean. It is not something I would have done for particularly these reasons, because he went outside of his jurisdiction. Well, he's a citizen of New Hampshire and went, if, if we lived in a perfectly constitutional world, and you, and uh, the, was it Nevada that they were in? Yeah. Bundy Ranch is in Nevada. So if, and if Nevada had a state guard or militia, of, uh, state militia of some sort, that would have been the authority to intervene on behalf of the Bundys. Or the constitutional sheriff? Uh, sheriffs are a funky business. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sher sheriffs are what sheriffs are in each state. Right. Okay, our sheriffs are, are don't have the same origin as other sheriffs. Do they have the same authority? They have the authority That's described in statute. The so state level. The, level. the authority a sheriff has to be stocks on the road may be different from on a state trooper. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. It's all dependent on the state. Look at, for example, similarly, uh, justices of the peace. Vastly different from state to state. Okay, well, so. I, I wasn't going to give the details, but it does. <laughs> but, 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 so, so Jerry's out in, in Nevada, where it would, if it were happening in a constitutional basis, it would have been the business of the state militia right. under the authority of the governor. And he comes out from New Hampshire. He's walked out from under any umbrella he had. He put himself in a precarious position. Is that true once I drive outside the state? No, that's different because you're not out there confronting the federal authorities with a firearm in your hands. With a different state government that is perhaps even less inclined to intercede on your behalf. Right. Now I heard, on the, I read on the internet, I don't know for sure the exact but the fellow they arrested, the, um, what is his name? The blues fellow who was out there, they arrested, oh, what was his name? Doesn't matter. Anyway, <coughs> he said that he had found that the federal government did not even have the rights on those lands because the, the charter of that county was in the original state of that <laughs> and yet the state did nothing about it. Well, and that's up to the state. That That's up to state authorities. That's the danger of, of engaging in something like that outside of your umbrella. 
Well, wouldn't that, uh, wouldn't that be brought up in court? And therefore... Uh, not in regard to Jerry. No, really. I don't think so. It would be very hard. You're, you're pulling threads upon threads. But if you go to Nevada, you're not under the umbrella of New Hampshire anymore, but you are under the Nevada umbrella. But he wasn't in, he wasn't an inhabitant or construing himself as a resident of Nevada. <coughs> he wasn't in any, he, he, he was not in a position to have been part of the Nevada State Guard if there were one. There, he, he had, he was outside his jurisdiction. We live in New Hampshire, we're inhabitants of New Hampshire. If there someday is a state guard in New Hampshire, we can act under that auspice and have, a, and have protection from the state, um, via the state. So the question of having pistols and firearms also, once we leave New Hampshire, well, then you're, it isn't just, it isn't just having firearms. He was in a position, he was confronting agents of the federal government. He was, they don't like that. I, I don't think he was really confronting. I don't think so. <clears throat> Let me explain something to you. <laughs> I have just assaulted this gentleman. Mm -hmm. right. I got a punch in the nose. Okay. If... I do this to a law enforcement officer, and I have a firearm on my person. You're right. I've just assaulted him with a deadly weapon. That's the way the law reads. You, you, so if I have a, a concealed carry thing or something with me, and I go like that, that's assault with a deadly weapon. It can be construed that way, and you'd have a real uphill battle in court. Oh, boy. Yeah. We tried to get that changed a few years ago. Didn't work out too well. Well, do it again this year. You're going to sponsor? And if you post, one more if thing on that, on that issue. If I understand correctly, the Bundys really asked for help throughout the country. Maybe I am wrong. They did, but any, anybody who went to help them from other states, they're on their own. They're on their own. They don't get any protection from the so, law, even though they're invited in. Nor from their own in, state. In a state, then, we don't really shouldn't rely on our buddies in, in Not, state. I wouldn't. You shouldn't rely on the state, period. Well, you should, but, but you shouldn't, you should, how do I put this? I want to come to the aid of somebody out in Wyoming. That's Wyoming. really the job of the people from Wyoming. And That's if they it. had a state government that was amenable to the concept of liberty and constitutionality, would ask for help from the other states. Exactly. That and state state come send your state guard to Come on in. So if but we they take that, that down to county, thank you. If we take that down to county or city level, it doesn't apply. No, no. Right, constitution. No, no. So this only applies federally and state. Yeah. But let's let's look back more to okay. But if you look at the 19th article of the New Hampshire Constitution. Yes. If I'm somebody who's here from Massachusetts, say, visiting family, that's still I, I know I'm not protected. No, you're not protected by the Massachusetts state constitution. Our, no, our, our state constitution still applies to all of our state officers. Right, because say that one again. Because it says that. Now, wait, wait, I just want to hear what it says. What it stands for. Um. His his. Uh, he has a relative visiting from Massachusetts, comes up to New Hampshire, and gets stopped by the side of the road by a New Hampshire state trooper. Does Article 19 apply? And the answer is unequivocally yes. It is New Hampshire Article 19. Right. Because it, says here, because it applies to the, the officer. Correct. Not but to the person coming in. But the only reason I ask the question is that every subject. And, and that's a good fine point. So when we look at that, the subject is not so even if you're coming down and you're visiting family and you're from the UK, you're obviously not a subject. Are you still protected by I, I would argue, yeah. mm. subject. <laughs> subject is not subject in that same sense in the United States. Subject, I would assert, in this context, is subject to the laws and regulations of that political jurisdiction. 
And that means anybody who comes here, citizen or subject from Great Britain or anybody, wherever this government, whether it's New Hampshire, whether it's the, the, the feds, wherever that government has authority in this governmental system, anyone who is lawfully there is protected the same way. You're talking about you're talking about territorial jurisdiction. It is 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 the proper term. Anybody who is within the ter territory of the United of New Hampshire is subject to the laws of New Hampshire. As any opposed any to federal any, laws that apply. Yeah. Any federal laws, but that's let, let's just stick. Subject probably is a is small small. Um, is it small s? Subject as an object? It's therefore not a person. Well, it's, it's, no, it can be a person, but it is the, the, the person subject to the search. Yeah, but subject is not referring to a person. It's just as a verb. It's a verb. No, it's a noun. Yes. Well, let's, let's, I, I want to compare our, uh, the Fifth Amendment to Article 15 also. And we, we had started to look at that before we got sidetracked. The state or the federal? First the federal. This is where we were. Nor shall, it, nor shall any, uh, well, I'll just start over. No person should be held to answer for any capital or otherwise infamous crime unless on presentment or indictment of a grand jury, except in cases arising on in the land or naval forces or in the militia when in actual service in time of war or public danger. Nor shall any person be subject to the same offense twice or put in Where are you reading here? Uh, page 18. Page 18. Okay. Oh, I'm fine. Okay, I thought you said 15. I thought you did too. Okay. No, I said we're going to compare the two. Uh, nor shall nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself or be deprived of life or liberty or property without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just, just compensation. Now, we divide that in the state into a couple of things. Uh, the last uh, being... What page are you looking at? Uh, we'll, we'll be over page 54-ish. 5-4. 5-4, 5-5. I have a question about federal. From what you just read, do they have a right to seize property like they do with drugs? Like a person a, could lose their house and everything they just throw out? A, a, they have no rights. Thank they have you. powers. Delegated authority. States, oh, no states have no rights. Only people have rights. Okay. Both have powers. Do they have the power? Well, they have physical powers. Well, do they? Do the question. The question. Your the question is: Do they have legitimate power? Yes. Or legitimate authority? Um, it's actually something that was begun early in the nation. Uh, I think under Jefferson. But you you have to understand that when they take property um, by civil a civil asset forfeiture, which is what they do. They are, in essence, accusing the property <laughs> of a crime. And they, they are, they are it's, it's like taking you, to, uh, taking you to civil court because you stepped on somebody's property and they want their pound of flesh to make their grass stand back up, whatever they're gonna do. So even though they can't, can't or didn't bother to convict you of a drug crime, they're saying that the assets you have are were used in or fruits of some crime and they take you to civil court uh, off, they have to take you to often court. ex parte you have to take them to court it yeah. becomes to, 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 claim it. to prove the party the property's innocence it flips the relationship which of course makes it difficult because unless you're now all of these all of these things are statutorily permitted whether or not they have what I would call lawful authority to do so uh, is another question I would say no 
that requires electing the correct legislators to erase the statutes off the books. We uh, we we did a, a lot of work on civil asset forfeiture in New Hampshire. One of the big things we did this year, this last term, and I was co-sponsor of the bill, uh, was to uh, make it so that all funds, instead of going to the local law enforcement, go to the general funds. The state general funds. The state general funds, which means... Guess who objected? Which, which means that the people on the ground who are making the, the <coughs> seizures get nothing out of it. And that's important. That's very important. Because they can now, is be that the law now? That is the law now, isn't it? Is that pretty much the same in the way after I'm not going to swear to it. I, mm, it, I think it, it, Maggie it, it signed got it. attacked. Well, it, it, I think I was shocked when I heard Maggie signed it. Yeah, we, we got it. We got it. It got killed, but we tacked it on to something else at, at the last minute. And she signed it. Yeah, because, Maybe. because we tacked it on to something she wanted dearly. Maybe. You, you, you should research it. And I Dan think I've got, well. Dan McGuire would know. He was the prime sponsor. But I'm pretty sure I did a video of at least one so of the hearings this year. So that, anything they seize now goes to the general fund, oh. rather than the county attorney, <laughs> or the local police officer. Mm. Is that true in most states or the New Oh, some of, some of them are dreadful. Texas, they're Oklahoma, so please. they're absolutely terrible. In what sense? If you're driving through and you have money, they'll stop you, take your money, and say, "Fight it, and we'll put you in jail." And you're you're on vacation. So New Hampshire is an outlier. Of this it is now. And there aren't any others. That pretty much. Uh, Maine's pretty good, I think. I don't know. But my next I don't care. question is: Is that going to make the legislature? <laughs> But you can so unelect right. legislators and generally yeah. can't unelect your cops. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure of the question. But we, we just looked at Article 5. Of the U.S. Of the U.S. Now look at Article 15. You see some similar elements. No subject <coughs> should be held to answer for any crime or offense until the same is fully and plainly and substantially and formally described to him. So you have to be made aware of what you're accused of. So for, and it says, it also says crime or offense. Which so, are you looking at? Uh, Article 15. So for instance, when David Johnson was in court, divorce court, battling over custody of his daughter, and they held an envelope up and said, because of what's in this envelope, <laughs> we're taking your daughter away. And he was never allowed to see what's in the envelope. Okay, that was blatantly unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. where, 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 where is this? Where is this? What the envelope would take us? Where did it, in the, the family court. court. Where? Family court. They can say they can't put the, allow the information to allow to the accused. Can they do that? Family court. It's horrible. Can they do? I've had they cases of housing. It's for the children. I've been working on this project for nigh these 10 years. You had the bill in your committee this year to take away their, or to, to, to erase notwithstanding law to the contrary. Yes. Okay, but we go on. Or be compelled to furnish evidence against himself. We saw that in the federal. Every subject shall have a right to produce all proofs that may be favorable to himself. You don't see that in the federal constitution. I like that one with relation to recording the cops at yep. the traffic stop. Mm -hmm. How can you uh, uh, it, it, how can you produce proofs if you're not allowed to produce proofs? Essentially, if you're not allowed to create them, exactly. And now we can. Yes. Also, co-sponsored. This is what you guys keep busy in the legislature. Well, we recording try. The cops. Yes. And, well, yes, you can. And I won a lot of money because they disagreed. Can, can I yes. ask a question, Dan? Yeah. I don't see much of this in the newspapers or anything. I know it's kind of not as newsworthy, but there's some way that 
mean, what the, you, the, look, the reason I like coming here is I'm hearing stuff I don't hear any place. I watch television, I watch news, I read newspapers, I do all kinds of things. I'm not hearing the stuff you're talking about. Now, okay, well, occasionally now, at the Cheshire County Republican Committee, uh, like Tom Eaton will come in, or somebody will come in and say, oh, didn't you know about it? And I'm thinking, the hell why would I know that? So why don't we know? Because nobody talks about it. Because litigants in court are intimidated not to. They don't want to become a despised litigant. Uh, to meet uh, witnesses against himself face to face to be fully, and to be fully heard in his defense by himself and counsel. That's not in the federal constitution. At the expense of the state. No subject shall be arrested, imprisoned, despoiled, or deprived of his property, immunities, or privileges, put out of the protection of law, exiled and deprived of his liberty or estate, but by the judgment of his peers or the law of the land. So there that means. Uh, whatever we write up in the legislature, if we if we created a, a, an offense, well, a good example is anything that's a misdemeanor gets heard in district court. District court is not a trial court. It's not a jury court. I'm sorry. What is it? A jury court. District court. District court. So misdemeanors are not heard by juries. Right. But it is according to the law of the land. Felonies go to Superior Court, which is a jury court. So that's that's where you draw the, the line. Um, so I just, but again, the most important thing is that your Article 15 rights, those which govern your relationship with the state of New Hampshire, are far more protective than your uh, Fourth Amendment rights or your Fifth Amendment rights. So it's, in, in the focus on the federal constitution, we've lost a whole body of thought relative to the state. And the state is the one, as I'd always tell people, who you send to Concord is far more than, important than who you send to Washington because we have far more legitimate power to reach into your lives and we're your only defense against Washington. Well, the thing is, and they it should have, they do have, they would use it, a lot of ability to protect you from the federal government. Intercession. What'd you say? Intercession. Some crazy guy started that talking about that states? about five, six years ago. Is that true of most states, Dan? Hmm? Is that true of It's every state. state. That's, that's, every it, state. Yeah, Understand, the federal government, the government of the United States, doesn't exist except on paper. I, 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 this is a, New it Hampshire. Only exists at the, at the pleasure of the state. Right, New Hampshire exists because we all live here. Okay, the federal government is a treaty between the states of mutual protection, commerce, and uh, adjudication of, of disputes between the states and citizens of the states. And to the outside world. And to the outside world, right. Well, I said mutual protection. Yeah, but in, in terms of uh, diplomacy and that crap, so like yeah. the president is supposed to be the face of the United States to the outside world, but really not a whole hell of a lot more. Right. So. So it only exists because the states created it. Right. The states existed for 12 years before the federal government was enacted by the states and gave them limited power. We, we the, the all, ultimately, ultimately all power rests with the citizens of the state. Uh, in, in a state of nature, each individual own, has all power. We enter into a state of society, we create the state of New Hampshire to execute things on our behalf. Remember we talked about natural law in Article 1. So we created the state of New Hampshire to serve us. And we delegated an immense amount of power to that state. 
but the state is only supposed to uh, have the power to protect your, if the whole concept is the individual rights. Right, no, but, but, let's, but let's, let's, let's build, so then the states are engaged, first, first thing they're doing is they're engaged in war. They know they can't succeed unless they band together. So they create the uh, Confederacy, or the, uh, the Articles of Confederation. The Articles of Confederation, like most of the state governments at the time, were organized in, they, they were ripe for tyranny because the legislature was also the executive and the judiciary. When, when Madison in, in Federalist Paper 47, uh, or I think 47, says, um, uh, when all three powers of government to wit the legislative, executive, and judicial exist, rest in the same set of hands, whether uh, elected, hereditary, or I think appointed, that may be termed the very definition of tyranny. What he was arguing against was the Articles of Confederation, because that's how everything was. That's how it was in New Hampshire from 1776 to 1784. You had the legend, you had the, the House of Representatives, which elected the Executive Council, which elected the pres uh, President of the Council, who was also the Chief Justice of the Courts. But the states got rid of the Articles of Confederation. Well, and then, but, now this is what's important. All of the, uh, the, the, the terms confederation, federation, treaty, alliance, they are all synonyms. And our legislature, when it wrote a letter to President Jefferson in 1807, I believe, and it's in my book, referred to the United States as a confederation, even after the Constitution. Which ratifies the, the the knowledge, their knowledge, that the terms federal, confederate, they were interchangeable. They were just, you know, they, they called it the Constitution to make it uh, linguistically independent of the Articles of Confederation. But it was still a confederation. <coughs> so the, the United States, the government of the United States, doesn't exist, I guess you'd say, except in theory. It, 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 has, it, it has no substance beyond the Constitution. Right. Without a Constitution, there is no the United States. Right. And it's limited, drastically. 18 powers delegated to Congress. Congress makes all law. And there are only a handful of things that are, that are prohibited by the Constitution to the, to the state, such as coining money. <clears throat> or, in, or interfering in private contracts. Or interfering in con yeah. private contracts. No state shall. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a very limited list um, in Article 1, Section 10. Limitations on the states. No state shall enter into any treaty, alliance, confederation, or confederation, grant letters of marker and reprisal, coin money, emit bills of credit, or make anything but gold and silver coin a tender in payment of debts, pass any bill of attainder or ex post facto law, or law impairing the obligation of contracts or any, grant any title of nobility. No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any imposts or duties or imports on ex or exports, except what may be absolutely necessary for executing its inspection laws and the net produce of all duties and imposts laid by any state on imports or exports shall be for the use of the Treasury of the United States, and all such laws shall be subject to the revision and control of Congress. No state shall, without the consent of Congress, lay any duty of tonnage, keep troops or ships of war in time of peace, which means we can during times of war, enter into any agreement or compact with another state or foreign power or engage in war unless it actually invaded or in such imminent danger as will not admit of delay. Except for 
what I just read and what is positively delegated to Congress in Article 8, everything belongs to the states or to the people. That's the Tenth Amendment. All powers not delegated to the Congress by the Constitution or prohibited by it to the states uh, remain with the people or the states respectively. The powers delegated to the executive is even much less. Well, he, the president has one job. You remember, remember Curley in, in City Slickers? He has one job. You know what his one job is? Do what he's told. What? Do what he's told by Congress. That's his job. He has no power independent of Congress. His job is to do what Congress tells him to. Congress has not uh, kept up schedule. Well, Congress has, has not protected the dignity of their institution. That's right. For a long time. He, the president, whichever president, for the last probably 67, well, at least since Roosevelt and probably earlier, uh, thumb their nose at Congress and Congress kind of shrugs their shoulders and kicks the dust and turns away. Which is ridiculous to say the most power in the whole thing is in, in the House of Representatives. That is true. That's true in our state, too. I have a little diagram. You know what's so easy a fourth grader can understand it? I diagram it out. I was going to bring in a chalkboard. I'll try and do it next week. You put up here, you put the legislature, you divide it in half, and you have the House and the Senate. Then you have the executive and the judiciary. And you just draw an arrow of a power each one has over the other. So you have a, a double-ended arrow for either house can, can initiate legislation, uh, and each house has a negative on the other. But only the House of Representatives can initiate a money bill, yep. a tax bill. Only the House of Representatives can initiate an impeachment. Yep. Together, they, they pass laws to the executive, the executive can veto, and they can override the veto. They can remove a member of the executive by impeachment. They can remove a member of the executive by bill of address with the consent of the governor. So you go through and you have all these arrows, who can do what, and you, um, then you count out who has the most arrows coming out of their boxes. And it's very simple. The most arrows come out of the House of Representatives, followed by the Senate, followed by the executive, and last and least, is the judiciary. Well, the other thing is... Convince them of that. The power of the purse... <laughs> Try it. <laughs> power of the purse is the biggest of the And we fail to use it. That's exactly right. We fail to... And, and in some cases, it's a hard thing to do because, for instance, if you deprive the judiciary of uh, operating funds, who's going to suffer? The people. Right. So it's something you want to exercise very, very judiciously. You don't want to... But the judiciary only has, uh, has the right to their opinion. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, has the privilege of their opinion. The legislature does not have to accept it. That is correct. And everyone today takes the... Takes the thinks that the, the ruling of the judges is the law. It is not. It is an opinion. And it says so. So I want to, now we're um, all the way to Article 20. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Before we, before we wind our way from 15, at the beginning of your speech, for your presentation, you were comparing Article 4, Federal Search and Seizure. To 15. To Article 19. Nine? 19 is search and seizure. No, uh, Article 15, not having due process. I mean, uh, probable cause. And the federal does have probable cause. Yep. And, and saying that uh, the New Hampshire Constitution is more restrictive. Yes. On the agents that we're dealing with. Yes. That's an interesting observation. 
And what could one do with that information? I don't know. We'll have to talk about it. <laughs> because all of our laws are based on probable cause, and it's not in the Constitution. Because we were relying on the federal Constitution, which is not particularly applicable to state and local officers. So if you go ahead. And, and again, the and the state always trumps. Whichever one is more restrictive always trumps. Well, you you can't you can't you can't use the federal constitution to allow a local officer to do what his state constitution doesn't allow him to. So let's say that you were going to. Um, charge somebody with a federal crime. That's done by federal authorities. And are they, if they are operating in New Hampshire, no. are they subject to the New Hampshire Constitution? No, because they don't take an oath to it. Their oath is to uphold the federal Constitution. But realize, there's a very limited number of crimes that are under federal jurisdiction in the first place. One of the problems is that we're We've seen a growth of crimes at the federal government which they have no authority to impose. Until the mid 20th, well, until the Lindbergh capping, there were no federal uh, kidnap laws. Those are all state laws. You have to also have to insert here, I think, the point that a lot of those federal crimes are not written by the um, uh, uh, the legislative branch. They're right. edicts from the executive branch that has no authority to write them in the first place. Okay. Federal, th there, there was no federal crime of murder until the 20th century. It's a state crime. So if you have something, for example, um, like, a, like a checkpoint, you know, for like, uh, <laughs> like a DUI, okay? Like, <laughs> Why would you choose that? <laughs> I'm just saying. Because <laughs> you brought up an interesting point at the beginning. So I have, okay, so if there's, if probable cause, everything requires a warrant, does that mean that the police officers in the town that are executing that checkpoint have a warrant? In advance? No, it means they're unconstitutional. Warrant. It means they're operating under, prob under quote unquote probable cause. However, so so would federal agents be able to set up a checkpoint? I don't know how, but local state police could not. Only if there were a federal crime that that to which a checkpoint would be applicable. But the feds do already. They've got the border checkpoints 100 miles from the border. Not all that much in New Hampshire, but they do do it, but go down to the, the Mexico border. And you can find videos of those stops, hundreds of them on YouTube. So because, so those checkpoints because this has been adjudicated before they've been found to be constitutional. Were they found to be constitutional based on probable cause? Probably. It's New Year's Eve, therefore there's been a Probably. <laughs> you know, but in New Hampshire, that's, that's a, a new point. Part. But, the, but a warrant needs to specify the persons specifically and the oath or affirmation has there ever been a case in New Hampshire where anybody's challenged that kind of thing? Not to, I do not know. I, not that I'm aware of, no. It, it, there are a lot of cranky activists, I can tell you that. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to envision uh, arguing my case in court <laughs> where the, cop, the state police pulled me over and uh, claim probable cause to get into the trunk of my car and they found illegal drugs. Now before a judge saying, well, probable cause doesn't come into effect, come into effect from my state constitution, and the judge is going to look at me, shake his head and say, stop talking to Dan. <laughs> that, that must have been argued at some point though, because I 
would think that that would be. <laughs> I've never heard of an argument. I just noticed it tonight. There is no justification for search or seizure or arrest under probable cause. That's a federal term. So you pull me over for a busted taillight. I do not consent to any searches. I don't answer questions. Have a good night, officer. Thank you for telling me. Thank you for telling my taillights out. <laughs> We've got a bunch of amateur lawyers that are developing here at the end. Is that what they're doing? But that's what we're supposed yes. to be. You have to be. We, we are the legislature. We make the laws. If we aren't thinking of these things, who is? That's our job. Otherwise, we allow bad law to go through. When I was in the legislature, Dan McGuire and I fought the zoning law because it would have put undue um, uh, harm on the landowner with no no uh, compensation. Compensation. That's that's horrific. But all of them do. I know that. <laughs> so this would have a farmer plowing his field was going to have to stop if he ran across an artifact, an, an archaeological <laughs> artifact. Or George. And they, they could, you know, he wasn't going to be able to do anything, and there goes his planting season or a harvest or whatever. We missed it. Ridiculous. They, 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 missed, it. they no. need to pay. They, all of these things, no. they, they have to pay the, the property owner. They, they need to stop stealing property rights. That's what they need to do. Well, the way to do that is to make them pay. Right. <laughs> don't let them write it in the first place. Well, then, let the, well, then, then citizens don't have to spend money paying lawyers to get their rights back. When I was in, we stopped that war. It's probably in now, I don't know. But we stopped it twice. I don't believe so. Yes, we did. We no, no, I don't believe it's in. No, it isn't good. We stopped it twice because they tried to bring it back. Obstructionist. <laughs> okay, so Article 20. Article 20 is extremely important. We, we touched on this earlier. This is jury trial in civil causes. Are we in federal now? Or no, state. state. Page 55. And it says, in all controversies concerning property and in all suits between two or more persons, except those in which another practice is and has been customary, remember this is 1784, in which the value of the controversy does not exceed $1,500, that's new, and no title to real estate is involved, that's old, the parties have a right to trial by jury. This method shall be held sacred, kind of an important and, and um, high value word, sacred, unless in, unless in cases arising on the high seas and relating to mariners wages the legislature shall think it necessary to hereafter alter it so what this says is that unless there was another practice for a civil trial at the time the constitution was written you have a right to trial by jury and at the time the Constitution was written, there was no dollar limit on it. Right. Over, the, over the course of time, there's been a dollar limit. First it was $500, and now it's $1,500. <clears throat> this was obviated by the judiciary in 17, I mean, in 1875, I believe. And they did their usual hand waving. And what they did, there, there are three, two, uh, two relevant cases. There's an 1865 case out of Michigan that, and now this is, was determined according to the Michigan Constitution. And there's an 1873 case, or 1872 case out of New Hampshire. Now, the 1872 case out of New Hampshire upheld 
and it was a case between an individual and a town, that you have a right to trial by jury unless there had been another practice. Unless what? Unless there had been another practice. Uh, another practice, for instance, at the time of the writing of the Constitution, um, involuntary committal was adjudicated by the selectmen. So there was another process for that civil action. But if there was not another process for that civil action at the time the Constitution was written, you had a right to trial by jury. And so in any new kind of civil action, you had a right to trial by jury. Because there, if it's a new civil action, it obviously, uh, there couldn't have been another practice of the kind the Constitution was written. Well, our Supreme Court in 1878 said, but there's this case in 1865 out of Michigan in which they found uh, it is everywhere understood that you have a right to trial by jury if that was the practice at the time the Constitution was written. Well, that is what the Michigan Constitution says. They, they said, uh, 1878, they said, way back in 1872, or 1875, way back in 1872, we did find that you had a right to trial by jury, unless there was another practice. But now we have this new case from 1865, from a different constitution that is everywhere construed. And from that time, you have not had the right to trial by jury in new types of civil cases. So they took it from another state? Yes. And, and from a, and out of time, because that one preceded the New Hampshire. They, they were wrong on two cases, on, on wrong, wrong on two counts. But that is why you do not have the right to a, a jury in traffic stop, in traffic violations, which are civil actions. I found this out because I wanted to require a right to trial by jury in termination of parental rights. Well, is that? No, of course not. It's a new type of civil action. Oh, my word. <laughs> yes. So the judiciary did their little hand waving. Barry, and then this is, this is the way they work. Big, long run up. When, when, when they're doing the slight of law, instead of the sleight of hand. When they're doing a sleight of law, they have a great big run-up, a very short argument, and a great big conclusion. Pay no, you know, don't, don't look, you know, it's, it's like any illusionist, don't look at where they're talking. Look in this little And that's where they have, they have misled you. And that's where they said, but we have this new case from 1865 in Michigan, <laughs> And they say well, it's why everywhere. Don't you change it? Well, I've tried that, and I was fought by one um, representative Rowe. Oh, well, I remember him. Well, you must be a real pain in the ass to a lot Rowe, of people. Rowe was the one who had that the, that the archaeological book that we fought and stopped. So, um, because. The question is, when the judiciary has made a, an, an act of what I would consider malfeasance or maladministration by blatantly misinterpreting the Constitution and changing the, and changing the meaning of the Constitution, and those judges are so long dead, whether it's 1878 or 1819, you can no longer impeach them. How do you reverse the decision? That's another case and then have a new decision. Why? <laughs> Why? It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a farcical decision. This, but there are this, lots this, of those there. Well, <clears throat> but this is, and this is the problem when the legislature doesn't stand up to the judiciary. The judiciary has, who gets to, what does Article 29 say? 29? What does Article 29 say? This is the New Hampshire. New Hampshire Constitution. That's the one that affects our judges. No law shall be suspended or executed 
No law ought to be suspended or executed. Oh, I want The power of suspending the laws or the execution of them ought never to be exercised but by the legislature. So how do you, the, the legislature has to hitch up its pants and simply say to the judiciary, that was a wrong decision. I've tried to introduce resolutions to just state that certain decisions were in error and got all kinds of resistance. Now, it's easy to prove, for instance, in Merrill versus Sherburn, that the judiciary simply lied. And in this, this, this decision, I can't remember the name of the case, but where they, where they used a prior case to supersede a more recent New Hampshire case to obviate the right to trial by jury in, new, in civil cases, particularly new types of civil cases, that deserves simply a resolution by the legislature saying, no. Well, and it requires a legislature can pass a law which obviates the effect of a poor judicial decision, right? Yes. We so can. That's the obvious. That's what we need to do. Trouble is, it means you've got a lot of work constantly doing that. Well, mm -hmm. when you try to keep up with bureaucrats, you've got to do all these other on your guard. But the only remedy for this one would be a change the Constitution, right? No. No, no, no. 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 See, it, well, the Constitution not. says what it says. Right. They, they miss and they... They misconstrued. Right. They misconstrued the Constitution. I didn't hear what he said. He, he said that we would need to change the Constitution. No, the Constitution is correct. It's the judges that were wrong. But you said the legislature was supreme, finally. So that's where the correction has to come from. That is correct. And there isn't much being done in the, in the state legislature about such things? No, it, depends. it requires the people to elect the right legislators. Oh, I didn't ask that. Is that where you supply? Are you implying that in general there isn't much there is not the resolve, no. There is not the desire. For what or the reason? understanding. For what reason? Uh, the 20th important. century education. Yeah. Not, yeah. not enough potential legislature, well, le legislators here to tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> that, that's, you know, why are there only the people that are here tonight? Is it possibly a lack that there isn't anything in running for office that anybody going to listen to it? In other words, it isn't a good thing. Ruth is now worrying about which things she should put. She can't push a hundred different things. And so that's somewhere. important. Well, no, no, I'm, I'm not arguing that. No, we, that's important. No, look, Ruth, is, Ruth this, has been a very, this has been very interesting for the two of us. Because the question is, who does she represent? And which things does she work on? Okay, and you can't represent everybody. You just don't even know what they well, do. First of all, first of all, she represents her district. Yeah. That's okay. it. Okay. Well, I said the first thing she represents is right and wrong. That's what she, that's what she should run on. This, I mean, the, so I've got to bring in one of my campaign signs. Okay. okay? I, my, I lay myself out, you've seen my campaign signs, right? I lay myself I out. Have. I lay myself out on my campaign signs. What, what's on them? Uh, uh, Dan, it's a state representative. Uh, Pro-life, pro-liberty, pro-family, uh, states' rights, because that's what people understood, understand. Forgive me that. States' rights, the Constitution's first, last, and always. And most people don't even know what that would be. No, my, cons my constituents love it. I get reelected all the time, and those are the signs they want on their property. Hey, just because you're a nice guy, Dan. But oh, I know his name. I'll vote for him. But but I but then I can go up to Concord and vote my conscience because I've laid my conscience out on the table, and my constituents put me there. It's interesting. I don't have to put my finger up, and my constituents can depend on how I'm going to vote because I advertised it. A listening room. Be consistent. 
Well, it is a, it, yes, that's true, and you know, do all you know, you always want to do the thing. But the question is, and I, I'm thinking that the answer to my question about why the legislature doesn't do something about the judicial overreach is that it isn't an issue which you no, bring up. no, it's because they do not because a majority of them do not comprehend judicial overreach. Say again, they do not comprehend judicial overreach. They I mean, believe so they are. So it isn't an issue, really. They they believe they are subject to the legislature. When when the Claremont two decision came out, now you meant to say they sent that to the judiciary. What did I say? You said the legislature. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. They believe the legislature is subject to the judiciary. When the Claremont two decision came out, we had legislators worrying that they were going to be held in contempt of court if they didn't vote according to what the decision said. Most people, I think, feel that way, uh, think that way. Don't you think? I don't know about most. I know some significant fraction do. I know too many in the legislature do. Where did, where did that thinking come from originally? Uh, the 20th Your century question. public education system. We have we have it legislators on uh, video uh, maybe eight years ago in that not me personally but somebody does of uh, it might be Dave Ridley don't recall somebody some legislator in uh, the state house responding to question on video saying we really don't care what the Constitution says. Hmm. We're going to pass it. We'll let the courts figure it out. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. It's scary. Mm -hmm. Ain't it just? So there is a general feeling that the judiciary is really the. I'm, I'm I, I would say I'm going to bet. I'm just asking. I would say general perception that that the judiciary is king. The judiciary declared themselves kings. They say that they have an inherent power of contempt. Well, we also, I mean, we grew up hearing the court has struck down. The court right. Has struck down. And that's why I say 20, the 20th century public education system. We have been inculcated in this for more than a century. And unless you read the constitutions, you don't know any different. Unless you actually sit down and read it, and you see that no, that uh, uh, and see the power of suspending the laws or the execution of them ought never be exercised but by the legislature, then you don't know it. Now, Article Twenty One is pretty vanilla. Just says that jurors ought to be adequately compensated. Pretty straightforward. Ah. Ah, that doesn't happen. Doesn't happen, but that's but it's pretty vanilla. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time there, but Is there, I, I, I complained one time. They said, "What are you complaining about? You get ten bucks a day." I was going to bring up how much uh, are you get in a day. I, I suppose it goes back to a lot more than that. No, I mean that's the response. All these things I know. Say, that's what they, I just laugh. Entitled to the trial by jury. But they never say where the jury comes from. Well, it says jury of your peers. Well, yeah. But and they, and Article 17, like Article 17, uh, uh, the, uh, in criminal prosecutions, the trial of facts in the vicinity where they happened is so essential to the security of life and property in a state of the citizen that no crime or offense ought to be tried in any other county or judicial district than that in which it is committed. Except, and then we add in the 20th century, except in any case, except in any case in any particular county or judicial district upon motion of the defendant and after, by, and after a finding by the court that a fair and impartial jury cannot be had where the offense may have been committed. So it says very positively that if you're going to have a trial by jury for a criminal offense, it must be in the jurisdiction, the ju uh, judicial district in which the crime occurred. Right, I'm, I'm talking about compulsion to serve. What? Compulsion to serve on the jury. Does, that, does any constitution ever? Well, it, it's going, it, it's, it, you're going, account, well, 
A judicial district is only going to have the power to compel people from its district to serve as jurors. <laughs> to go back to your, who was it who said to you, what are you complaining about? You're getting 10 bucks a day? Was yeah, that an the officer, guy, of the the court? officer of the court? Yeah. Officer of the court. You were a jury member. You're the most important person in that room, for Christ's sake. I understand sake. that, but it didn't. I get paid a little bit than $10 a day. And I was spending my time there. Look, I got even for them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> OK. Outstanding. OK. Now, this one I want you to take. Which, what take page OK, we're now, we're now on to page 56. And there's, a, there's a group of articles I really want to get through tonight. But there's a couple before no rush. We'll get to it next time. Oh, we got two more. There's more better. <laughs> and there's plenty of articles. Um, article 22, free speech and liberty of the press. Mm. Now, one important thing is there was no free, free speech by the general public in our Constitution until the 1970s. What they said was liberty of the press is so essential to the security of a free state freedom in a state they, that it ought therefore to be inviolably preserved. In 1968, we added free speech. But what they were really concerned about was the written word, i.e. newspapers and the ability to publish articles against the government. Remember, free speech is not what happens between you and I, it's what happens between you and the government. But doesn't it imply that all speech is free? This only corrals the government. This this keeps the legislature from making laws against particular kinds of speech. So there's nothing protecting including me, hate speech. There's nothing from me. So there's nothing keeping me from engaging in hate speech. There shouldn't be. No. To do so would be unconstitutional. In, in 2012, when this came to the constitutional review. The, uh, the legislation you wanted to put in? Yep. So if I said that Anne beats up her husband, she can't do anything about it, even though she does. No. <laughs> we make a law that we cannot make a law that the government can inhibit her speech against her husband. Ah, you poor joke. That's, that's, that, remember, the Constitution is generally intended to restrict government. So the thing between people. That we make laws, we make laws to arbitrate the, to, to arbitrate the, the rights of, the of between individuals. It's the things of people. Right. Six but there can still be Right. But that's that's not a matter that's not a matter of law. Okay. Um, well, that's interesting, though. That that the Constitution really doesn't care about the relationship between Anne and I. You no. have to make a law to arbitrate. So the Constitution is really only between me and the government. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and your contract, the, uh, any contracts between you, the government is supposed to be allowed to get involved with to begin with. I never thought of it that way. Hmm. Anne could all do her ranting and raving without any limits at all. The way it should be. Yep. <laughs> I have, I'm actually at this point, because I've been fixing an iron for a couple of seconds here. I'm not sure it's relevant, but there isn't a um, U.S. Supreme Court ruling, Lovell versus City of Griffin from 1938. I have this on the front page of my blog, and in part it says the liberty of the press is not confined to newspapers and periodicals. It, is necessar it necessarily embraces pamphlets and leaflets. Yep. These indeed have been historic weapons in defense of liberty as the pamphlets of Thomas Paine and others in our own history abundantly attest. The press, in its historic connotation, comprehends every sort of publication which affords a vehicle of information and opinion. 
U.S. Supreme so Court, I could, 1938. I could write something nasty about Anne, as long as I wrote it as a pamphlet or a. Well, and now we protect free speech as well, as of 1968. But the Constitution, as originally written, was intended to protect, I guess you'd say, political opinion. That's the most dangerous of the government. Sue. She can still sue him for libel. Correct. That's a different issue. I that, see, but so the, the government. Uh, so other, other than other than having the judge in the courtroom arbitrating the case between the two of you, that's not a matter of law. The government's made no law saying what she can or cannot say. The question, there's just witnesses and a jury that arbitrate between the two of them. Did she injure him falsely? So if I say poor Joe, she has to sue me. Right, but it's not. But you, but there's no crime. It's a matter of civil That's litigation. Oh. Article 23, retrospective laws prohibited. Yes. Yes. Now that, that has its corollary. Remember we said no state shall make ex post facto law? Before that was ever there, we said retrospective laws are highly injurious, oppressive, and unjust. No such laws, therefore, should be made either for the decision of civil causes or the punishment of offenses. It doesn't leave out that you couldn't retroactive define a new offense. No, you cannot do, no, re, retro, that's what retrospective means. No, no, that's the punishment of offenses. It doesn't say you couldn't retroactively define a new offense. Well, you couldn't punish it if you did, so. Well, I have a question, I don't know. No, no such laws, therefore, should be made either for the de decision of civil causes civil or, cases, or, the, or the punishment, punishment of offenses. offenses. So no so. such law should be made. No, it doesn't say that. Yes, yeah, it, it does. does. No. A, a retrospective law criminalizing something you did previously doesn't cannot be made. No, it doesn't say that. Yes, it does. Yeah. No such law, therefore, should be made. Either for the decision of civil cases, leave that up, shall be made for the punishment of offenses. Right. It doesn't say you can't be defined. But the retrospective is earlier. No, 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 not, not a new offense. But you can't you can't redefine an old offense or it create. It doesn't say you can't come up with a new one. Right. You well, can't. That, that's not retrospective. You can't say that you are guilty. We're making the law today and you do this 10 days There ago, you go. So therefore, you are guilty as soon as we pass the law. That's retrospective. Now, 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 wait a minute. If we say that Anne can't beat up Joe anymore, that's a new offense. Right. And when she does it again, then we have a problem. But she, she did it last no, week. No, Joe had the problem. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> this has been going on for years. But, Where are but so, Where are so, that, that, so in this case, in this case, the federal constitution is in agreement with the state constitution. Remember, the state constitution came first. Now we got into what I really wanted. This, this is just something that's been on my uh, heart, on my plate, on my thoughts a lot. Um, we get into all the uh, three, four of the articles concerning military slash militia, and then there's one uh, later, Article 34, and I don't know why that's separated several articles later. But let's just look at look at these five articles. Which, Art which numbers? Uh, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 34. And before I do this, can anybody tell me what martial law is? What is martial law? Martial law is when the uh, United States Army enforces state law. Not precise. No. Not precise. What is martial law? When law is made by the executive. No, that's not true. We're, we're going we're, we're gonna to get this one right. What is, the and, 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 and you were the closest so far. Suspension of the Constitution and the no. The, no, the, no. The military or the militia enforces the law? That's it. 
the, mili the military or the militia enforces the civil law. And I've read some books from a military perspective. T and typically under martial law, the military does the interdiction. They do the arrest. If they apprehend a civilian, they then typically turn the civilian over to civilian authorities. They don't have to. They don't have to, but they don't want to deal with civilians. They want to deal with members of their, of their own military or foreign forces. So I need to interject this right here. What is the difference between martial law and what Jeannie Forrester is advocating in the war on opioids? One is constant, uh, martial law can be constitutional. What Jeannie Forrester is advocating is not. Okay. Excuse me, just won't you? I can do that. Okay. <laughs> said, go, go take care of your family. Said who? <laughs> so, yeah, you know, we need to decide when, when the next should be. Um, my plan had originally been the last Sunday in September. That work? Okay. Sure. That's fine with us. Same bat time, same bat channel? Yep. We're all having a good time. The beauty of this is we do this and it gets up on YouTube and people can find it and it doesn't have to stop just when... But it's not as much fun as being here. No, it's not. I feel, I mean, I think it's immensely fun. But it's available to candidates next session too. Well, or those that are still running or whatever. I mean, that's, that's, she will win. that's the, September 25th was found out. 6 p.m. Give or take. Dan. Same bat time, same bat shape. Okay.